over on the CT side. And indeed, we will see Havu picking up the CT start. Here we go. Do no diffuse kit picked up yet on the Havu side of things. Slowy on that default P2000. There we go. Saw picks up the diffuse. Couple of flashbangs on him. Astro and Eccles picking up utility. Sacrificing that armor. Not so much of an issue against the USPS's two P250s. For Alex and Stanley to try and raid bosses, Twix, he's going to go for the early contact, not spot anything out. This is a straight B play. Slowy takes the contact, but Alex rips his head off. Zori has to try and hide, stay alive. There's still plenty of presence for the CT side as this rush comes through. Nice flashbang, not really benefiting. Now Zori with the double kill, looking for more. Zori gets his triple, might get the quad as well. Eccles, last man alive for Fierce as this push has been decimated. Desperately trying to get something done. Saw will clean up the mess. Zori, what was that? Two bullets, two headshots. We've seen Tizian pulling off the 90 degree vertical flicks from that position. And he just spent so long hiding there. And nobody went to check it on the fierce esports side of things. A little bit of a mistake costing them that T-sided pistol. Without a bomb plant to work off the back of. No force by coming in from fierce. We have seen them liking to force into those second rounds where they get the bomb down. But instead, they're going to grab a couple of P250s. The one Deagle onto Alex. As Zori's going to go for a little bit of a prod with the MP9. Trying to get the information. As we do see Fierce spreading out into much more default strategy. Slow, he's managed to take nice control of Phoenix. So, have you actually have a pretty good idea of where this play's going already? The pistol's just looking to stay grouped for the time being. Alex going for a little bit of a wander up long. To try and get some information with that Deagle. Of course, benefiting from the range of that pistol. He's actually going to dive down and start to clear the bathrooms. There's only two P250s and a Deagle. Not a lot that Fierce can expect from this round. Though. Arguably, the best outcome is to die to the M4 of Hoodie rather than the SMGs with those increased loss bonuses. Sword jump peeking will spot out a lot of presence. The Molotov goes deep. Zori playing in a very advanced position. That's just to bait the lack of position for him. Try and get some of those Fierce players walking into his crosshairs up close and personal. And there goes the early peek. Information found for Zori. Drops the Molotov and the smoke to escape as Hoodie... Holding towards long, of course, with the M4, we'll get the early opening and up close and personal hoodie on the triple spray down. We'll actually get traded out by Eccles, but he's not really in a position. Just about recovers the M4 as, as the reload comes in. Zori cleans up house, even upgrading that MP9 onto the dropped M4. So that's a really well-managed round by Havu. Dispatching of the Eco fairly efficiently over against Fierce as we will see them getting their first bar on the board. Zori actually going straight for the AWP as well. No messing about on the CT side of things here. Gets himself a nice double kill with the MP9. And just going to go grab the AWP off the back of that. As it is Kriegs and the three AKs over on the fierce side of things. To try and start their T side yet to get around. But of course, this is the first real test. First time the rifles have come out. As have we get a half a bonus round. Sticking with the three UMPs. Of course, Zori and Hoodie fairly heavily invested. So... Not too much of a bonus round. They do need this one to go well as Fierce just queue their way up that right hand wall. Not looking to expose themselves to an orc just yet. Who is currently playing in towards the Vida. Backing off the bathrooms as Fierce push through. Not looking to really take any kind of aggressive contact. He'll know with the SMGs he really has to be the instigator here. So he's just falling back onto a half angle. Spots the shoulder and takes the frag. I don't think Alex had any idea he was exposed there. Fierce instantly dropped a man. One of those AKs dropped on the floor. And that's a lot of information gathered as well over on the Havu side of things. The AWP spotting the early pick. They're going to know that at least the early presence was towards that A bomb site. And now as the push starts to come in, Molotov utility being thrown by Hoodie. He needs to support his AWP and he will indeed. Takes down Stanley as he looks to strafe his way up to the site. Repositions and dodges the flashbang. And Fierce, they've got nowhere. A nice tag brings Frey down to 6 HP. The flash a little bit too late as Hoodie gets his second of the round. And with a 6 HP Frey playing it towards the headshot angle, these UMPs can start to hunt. And indeed they will. Slowy grabs a first. Can't quite finish off the second, but... As Astro takes him down, the AWP will know exactly where he is. And Zori does his job and does it well. The first rifle round dispatched of over on the CT side of things. As they keep four players alive, Hoodie grabs himself a Krieg and an AK-47 recovered by Saw. That is such a nice start to the CT side for Havu. Dispatching of that bonus round. Winning it in style as well. Four players kept alive. We'll see Fierce again. 
Horse back down, three Deagles, a CZ, P250 for Astro, not a lot to work with whatsoever. We're not really seeing the deep Molotovs coming out early on from Habu, as Eccles does actually find a nice little bit of a tag through the smoke. Unfortunate that he doesn't get more with that Deagle there, must have just come through the side of the wall. And the spam through, that is ridiculous, Saw, taking Freighter down to one HP through the side of that metal wall. Just reads the timing on that so perfectly. He's found so much damage as Alex is trying to go for a little bit of a sneaky play. But Zori's got his number. Has Hoodie to back him up on that peak as well. And you can see Fierce want to try and explode towards that Orp's position. But Zori with an absolute field day. The Krieg of Hoodie just going to back him up. And the two remaining players, Eccles will be able to get one early on. He's actually dropped the Krieg of Hoodie. But you can see the rifles just coming in to recover the situation instantly. You see Saw rotating in with that AK-47 to support his AWP and not allowing Fierce to overwhelm the AWP between shots. And again, it's just really efficiently managed by Havu. A 4 to nothing lead. We will see the rifles coming out again for Fierce. They're really going to be stacking up absolute maximum loss bonus at this point. But look at the money over on the Havu side of things. Twixie and Hoodie are reinvesting frequently, but Zori, Saw, and Slowey all have so much cash as we see that Molotov I talked about going deep into spawn forcing some smokes out early on on the fierce side of things as Molotovs and counter smokes come out from Havu. That Molotov and smoke just bleeding a little bit of utility. Zori's got very aggressive actually in towards short this time. They're doing a really good job here Havu of rotating that AWP early on. You can see Fierce are playing very passively towards the A-bomb site early on. That was where we previously saw Zori as he does get a little bit of chip nade damage onto Frey. Now just starting to back out of the situation. Knows he can't hang around for too long in towards connector. It's a little bit of a risky hold on that Phoenix position. So just backs out in towards the B-bomb site. Holding from short. That's a really nice retreat angle if required. As Hoodie is left with Saw on this A-bomb site. Playing a weird crossfire for the time being. They've got Hoodie very aggressive towards the half wall. And then Saw behind him just jiggle peeking the angle using a little bit of utility. But really doesn't have the rifle for this ranged engagement. Normally you'd expect to see Zori on the AWP in that position as Fierce. Again, they're queuing up towards this A-bomb site. They clearly think they've got an opportunity to break into this one. As they are looking to take control of Long. Astro and Stanley. This is going to be Hoodie's first real test. This is all on the timing as well. Astro and Stanley. The utility comes over the top. They'll know they're there now. Stanley spots Hoodie out. Drops down. Finds the frag. Down to 20 HP. But it's just the one player on this site. The rotations come in from Zori. But is it too little too late? Saw is very, very isolated here. Fully blinded. He's still going to get one for free. Spins. Gets the second before he's taken down. He's bought his team a chance here. It's three on three on this retake. And the time is running out. Eccles has to try and get this plant down. He fakes it the first time, but the bomb isn't there. The spray is good for two from Slowey, and he has single-handedly won this round. Zori just backing out of the situation with the AWP. What an individual play there. Slowey going huge for his team. The double spray he was spraying at his own teammate for a while, but recovers it to grab two kills, deny the bomb plant. And Fierce just left that a little bit too late. Five to nothing, the scoreline. Some adjustments needed over on the Fierce side of things. And I would like to see them taking a timeout now. Taking a little bit of an opportunity just to assess how this situation is going. And what they need to do to recover. Molotov again goes deep early on. Stanley takes a little bit of damage escaping it. And this time, Zori on the AWP getting aggressive into the bathrooms. Spam through from Eccles. Not connecting onto much of anything. These Havu players have done a really good job of rotating their setups. You can see Zori just starting to back off now. Is aware that he won't want to stay aggressive for too long. And as this utility comes through from the fierce side of things, that's a really nice nade. Getting a little bit of chip damage. Stanley and Alex brought down. And Stanley is definitely a one-shot headshot now for the M4s. And that is so, so important. As fierce, again, they're going the same way. They're taking early control of the bathrooms. Looking to posture towards that A-bomb site to start things off. But... No counter-aggressions just yet from the Havu side of things. We normally see a lot more aggression from them in towards B. Seen them taking Phoenix control, taking map away from Fierce. This time not chosen to do that as Saw just jump peeking. We'll be getting the information, so they do have that call available. Pop flash goes out towards Long. It's a double setup in towards the bathrooms at the moment for Hoodie and Zori on that AWP. You can see how actively he wants to play. He's trying to get that first pick around the edges of the divider. But as Fierce start to queue up, he has to back off to the site. And the rotation so perfectly timed. Saw's going to make his way up 
through the stairs in towards CT. Just as this execute comes through from Fierce, the Molotov and flashes by more time. As this execute is going to be stalled by the utility of having Molotov goes deep. That keeps Eccles and Frey out of the equation a while longer. The boost over the van is going to spot a lot. And the bomb's actually dropped by Zori. Stanley manages to trade for one. And the spam through isn't really connecting on the Havu side of things. The bomb's going to go down. It's a four on four retake. As Hazori somehow catches a dropping Stanley. The timing's good for Frey to get one in recovery. And there's good tags to work with. Could this be a first round for Fierce? Now a three on two. And they know where Zori is. The Molotov goes deep to force him off that angle on the AWP. It's really down to Hoodie. And with just 36 HP to work with, this is going to be so, so difficult. Frey just executes the AWPA. And Hoodie, there's nothing more left for him. Eccles will find it. And find a first round for Fierce. That A site take finally pays dividends and they've actually kept Havu's economy fairly honest. That A site take finally wields success over on the fierce esports side of things. It's taken them five attempts but they finally got it right. And the buy is going to be a little bit wobbly for Havu. Hoodie's going to drop down onto the Deagle. 5-7 five, five, for Twixie. Two M4s and an AWP, so not the worst force buy in the world. Still seeing plenty of rifles coming out, and Zori really has been the catalyst for Havu's success so far, as we're going to see Eccles fast into Phoenix, and that's actually forced Slowey off that angle, just falling back in towards the B-bomb site. Early aggression, this time towards A from the CT side of things, as the nades are catching Eccles, getting a lot of damage done early on. Fierce responding by heading out towards a long. The boost over is going to catch Eccles completely unaware. Saw that is such an opportune pick. To open things up. The flashbang will force Zori off of the long angle. As the AKs look to pressure him. He's in an awkward position here. He'll find one. The trade's there from Stanley. That leaves Hoodie all alone in the bathrooms for the time being. He needs support. And the rotation is called. Sword's going to make his way up. Of course, there's still two pistols over on the Havu side of things. And Hoodie's got one of them on the Deagle. Such an awkward position to try and lock down with just a Deagle to work with. He has a little bit of utility. Flash Molly. And a HE to try and unlock it. Saw comes wide to help him out. But Hoodie doesn't need it. Grabs himself a double kill before Frey actually executes the assistance. Hoodie, though, uses the opportunity to grab himself the AWP. Fall back off the angle. Molotov goes onto the bomb to keep Frey out of it a little while longer. And Hoodie will clean up house. How has that force by worked for Havu? Hoodie goes absolutely huge. Grabs himself a double kill on the Deagle to take him into those double digits. Grabs 10 so far out of seven rounds. Twixie's yet to get a kill. But Havu are just owning the CT side of Overpass so far. And you can see Fierce, they just won a round. Of course, the reset no longer such an issue. But they just won a round. And then instantly, the response is there on the Havu side of things. Just instantly finding themselves a round they really had no business winning. There was five rifles over on the Fierce side of things. But they just couldn't find a way in. AKs come back out for Fierce as they do go for the four-man force by Eccles. The only one without the cash to grab a rifle is going to drop down onto the CZ-75 instead. As the full buy comes out on the Havu side of things, you can see Zori still on that AWP. Of course, saved in the previous by his teammate Hoodie, who got that beautiful double kill with the Deagle. to lock down a long. A Miss Molotov will allow Fierce out a little bit early. As they're currently queuing up towards the B-bomb site. They've just sent Stanley to make some noise towards A at the opening. Just to perhaps try and cause a slight rotation over on the Havu side of things. As we do see Havu bleeding a lot of early utility. The boost up has got short locked off. But it has left Hoodie isolated in towards the A-bomb site. Not a lot of room for him to maneuver as this nade stack could be huge. Zori, Slowy, the double kill, the double nade stack. That is absolutely huge for Fierce. They read the play. The nades come through. They find themselves two kills. And now they can start to push into the site. How huge could that be? Two rifles dropped. Eccles has actually managed to recover the AWP. It went over the top of the wall, and that's given him a rifle. Now a 5 versus 3 situation, and Fierce have so much map to work with. All three CT players are towards B, and Fierce have just realized that with two kills on the stack, they can just head straight towards this A bomb site. There is no presence for Havu, and they're surely calling the save if this bomb goes down. You could not ask more of that nade stack. That is absolutely ridiculous. Normally, you'll catch the jump peeking player for a little bit of damage. And if you're really lucky, a kill. But instead, Havu find themselves two players down as the bomb will go down on the A bomb site. And it doesn't look like Havu have any intention of chasing this. Five versus three. The economy is pretty busted over on the CT side of things. You can see Hoodie just looking for that AWP on the ground. But it actually got dropped over the wall into the hand of Eccles. 
How awkward <sighs> is that as Frey is just spamming his mic? Thank you very much, boys. Much appreciated. Five rifles kept alive on the fierce side of things as well is going to really allow them to start to build that economy, start to build their cash up. Exactly what you want to do on the T side of overpass. This now can start to become a much stronger half from them. Really looked like they were going to be struggling, but instead they find a couple of opportune picks. They do allow three players to stay alive on the Havu side of things. Fierce really not looking like they want to force things up here and start hunting down players. So a second round for Fierce, leaving three players up. There will be a half buy to kind of counter this, but it's not going to be great at all. Twixie manages to drop himself a Famas across to Slowey. There's really not a lot of cash left in the bank any longer for this CT side. They looked so set, but instead... They find themselves broken. The MP9s come out. The FAMAS for slowly. The utility so limited as Astro gets dropped across the AWP. Fierce. They've got everything they could ever want for Christmas. Can they make it work again? Zori this time without the AWP is still going to get very aggressive into the bathrooms early on. Trying to be proactive. But Saw pushing down in towards... Ooh, connector could be in trouble here. There is plenty of presence for Fierce to try and counter this. They don't look like they're too keen to push out though. Just dropping back off of it. Not looking to get too aggressive. Instead, going to turn their attention towards the A-bomb site with a little bit of utility. As Fierce playing this very slowly to start. Of course, they'll know they left three players alive. So, they'll know there's three rifles on the board for Havu. And it'll just be about trying not to walk into those untradeable positions. As Stanley, he makes the noise towards the A-bomb site. The bomb queues up towards B. Fierce going back to route one. They've had limited success at the A-bomb site. Only one take with actual resistance has gone their way. Of course... The second round they won, there was nobody on that A-bomb site. So I'm discounting that one from the logs. But now they'll head towards B. Looking to line up that utility. It's currently a very isolated Twixie on this B-bomb site. The fast flank from Sora is going to spot nobody. He's made his way all the way through. But as Fierce start to execute, he needs support here. And slow, he's making his way down. Saw and Zori are going to be on a very fast flank. They spot out Stanley and that will be a frag. But as this bomb site goes down, Twixie gets a one-for-one -one trade. And it's all on to Slowy alone and isolated. He can't get it done. Three on three, and with Astro holding down short, this is going to be a very difficult retake, but Zori's had enough. Straight through the smoke makes it three on two. And the nades take down Eccles. It's all on to Frey. Nothing he can do. Havu again bite back. Fierce find themselves around off of what you can argue is a very lucky double pick with the nades. But Havu instantly respond. The force buy comes out. They find frags with those worse weapons and they make these rounds stick they make these rounds work even when they don't deserve them seven to two the scoreline and this is fierce's map pick remember this is their choice to come onto this map to try and take havu early on and it is not working out so far the current scoreline seven to two if havu can keep this momentum going it's going to be a very difficult half for fierce who do manage to get the investment in they're dropping down Astro without the AWP, but still solid utility. And Astro eats an early nade again from Hoodie. No warp, but solid utility and solid firepower. Three Kriegs, couple of AK-47. Sori, of course, has that AWP in his hand. Saw him with the MP9 in the previous, but this time he's got the upgrade as Fierce. Just starting to take control of Connector. You can see Frey perhaps wants to go for the pick onto Saw, jump peeking towards Short, but the Saw falls off of that one. Not going to take any real damage. Astro lines up the utility to allow his teammates out as they start to pick up the pace here. Starting to go fast towards that A-bomb site. The rotation has been called. It's Hoodie alone on this site. Dropping down that utility to buy himself a little bit of time. The Molotov's doing good tick damage, but Hoodie alone on the site has been found by Alex early on. And Zori on the fast flank has been read so perfectly. The AWP cannot do anything. Five on three tags to work with for the CT side. But do they even commit to this? They're locked out of the site by the utility. There is nothing more they can do again. This map goes back and forth as it looks like Havu once more called the save. And once more, Astro recovers the dead orb of Zori. This time in a much more legitimate manner. A nice double entry from Fierce who just looked to up the pace. And Havu really didn't have the response on that A-bomb site. Still keeping three players alive. Still, Fierce can't really afford to hunt. There is not a lot of cash in the bank to back this one up. So keeping five players alive, far more important on the Fierce Esports side of things. They will allow Havu three men, but the loss bonus really isn't going to be too great. Havu have not built themselves up a bank of cash. And you can see Zori can buy perhaps a rifle and no head armor, but Hoodie's only got 1,900. He's going to need a drop. 
Abu once more find themselves on the ropes, but they've rescued themselves from this position a couple of times before. Can they do it again? Currently two players on Havu hitting the double digits. Nobody can say that over on the fear side of things. Astro really needs to start to come into his own on this AWP. Overpass a map where those Orpers can be so, so instrumental. As again, looks like early pressure coming in from Zori and Hoodie. Trying to take the fight to the T side as they get aggressive into party early on. There's plenty of presence from Fierce, but Havu wisely perhaps just back off and start to look at a long take where Fierce are currently making their presence known very swiftly. Alex and Stanley going to walk right into the crosshairs here. This is very awkward. The double peak comes in. The flash is too late. A nice early frag. And Alex is fully blinded. Hoodie just swings the support. His rifler. And the flashes are just miscued from Fierce. The UKCS is not working out so far. The bomb isolated on the back of Astro has to stall in towards Tree. Can't afford to lose the bomb and a third man in that trade. So this time it's Havu who find a couple of early picks. Fierce really, once they slow these rounds down, they're not looking too well queued on the flashes. Mistimed nades giving away frags there. If that flash is well timed, Stanley gets an easy kill. But instead, it's Eccles taking contact against the the M4 of Zori up towards that A bomb site. Still stuck in towards the Vider. And you can see Hoodie and Saw. Hoodie and Zori, excuse me. They've got such a nice crossfire setup. It's allowing Zori to be proactive, get aggressive. Spots Eccles out, takes him down easily. And the two remaining players locked out towards long. It's Astro and Frey to try and be the heroes for Fierce Esports. How many times have we said that yesterday and today? Five versus two to try and make their way onto this A-bomb site. The money is there for them to give this a go. Fierce have actually got a better bank of cash from the loss bonuses. But it's going to be very difficult to get into this site. Zori playing... Behind the boxes, biding his time, finding the moment to strike, and the frag is taken. Astro, one versus five on the orc. The flashbang won't blind him, so he should be able to find at least one, but with time running out, there's nothing more he can do but try and bolt it to the site. And Havu know it, they will clean up house. Twixie grabbing his second kill of the half. And I think that really says it all for Havu. Twixie is only on two kills, but they're still five rounds ahead. They've still grabbed themselves an eight to three lead on the CT side, as we do see the pause coming in, and... Perhaps some adjustments from Fierce. Have we have guaranteed themselves the lead at the half? And remember, this is Fierce's map pick. In a matchup that can very much be argued to favour Havu, the Finnish roster. They spent their time in MDL. They've come down to this relegation tournament, been knocked out into the lower bracket, but not looking to make the mistake a second time. Astro will get that AWP once more. The full investment comes out from Fierce Esports. If Havu can hold this round with a good number of rifles kept alive, they will really start to build up their economy. But the double AWP setup actually comes out. Stanley, I think that was a little bit of a miss by. He looked seriously pissed off by that. Just the one flashbang to back it up. Two AWPs for the T side of Fierce to try and find some picks. As Stanley goes early towards the A-bomb site, spots out Hoodie and hits the shot as well. That is exactly what you want with this double AWP setup. Go get those early picks as Hoodie... Tries to contest the angle and just gets caught out by the AWPer. Counter-aggression from Twixie is going to run right into the face of that. Three players from Fierce. He gets one. He gets two. He gets the triple spray down. Twixie, how do you do this? You only had two kills, but now you have five and you have single-handedly decimated the round for Fierce. Stanley and Frey left in recovery mode. Four versus two. That is a god flashbang coming in to allow Twixie to get that triple. Spotting out Frey. Slowy knows he doesn't need to get aggressive. He can just back out of that situation. Twixie has done all he needed to do there. An absolute god flashbang comes in for Havu. Twixie on the triple spray down. Single-handedly locks this round out. Frey and Stanley on this occasion to try and hero play it out. But Slowy and Twixie still... It's going to be a 2 on 2 no matter what site they look to hit. And... The off angle for Slowy is going to be huge as Frey just trying to creep his way up is going to walk right into the crosshairs. An execution job. Stanley the last alive on that orb. They'll hear his position as soon as he takes the shot. And just descend on him like vultures to a corpse. Stanley desperately trying to stay alive. Trying to do some more damage. There's still four players left alive for Havu. He'll find one with a lovely flick. But that's all he'll get. Havu get their ninth. They keep three players alive and start to build that CT economy as we head towards the death of this first half. That was an absolute god flashbang. I didn't think he was going to get anything done there walking into three players from Fierce Esports, but a single god flash ruins the round over on the T side. Stanley does such a good job to get that opening pick. 
A missed shot by Hoodie gives him the opportunity, but instead, the round falls foul to a little bit of luck and a lot of skill from Twixie. The half buy comes in from Fierce, fairly heavily investing off the back of this. It looks like they're actually going to mostly force Alex and Stanley heavily buying into this one. Of course, you can't see the loss bonus on the SEA, so a little bit complicated, but... Three pistols, two MAC-10s. Their loss bonus must be substantial against the AWP and four rifles. Two saved AKs for Twixie and Saw. This is looking like a very solid half of Counter-Strike from Havu. And Fierce must be praying that their CT side is absolutely watertight. As early presence towards the B-bomb site. Looks like Fierce want to go fast in towards Phoenix. The Jump Peaks will spot this out. The utility to try and lock Havu out of the fight. But instead, they're just going to fall back into water. As the fast play actually comes in. Fierce get a one-for-one -one trade. But Twixie's still alive. Makes it a two-for-two. Two. Still players on this site. And it's still Saw locking it out. So much damage done by the rifles. The AWP has been recovered. And Astro actually grabs himself it. Frey on the AK, not able to do any real work though. And Astro left three versus one. Havu dispatching of that force. Dispatching of the fast play in some style. Astro, three versus one. He does have the AWP. He has armor to back it up. No more utility left for the fierce man to try and pull off what would be a miracle clutch. Chooses to back out of that B-bomb site situation. But you can see the aggression already from Havu. Slow, he's taking control of Phoenix. Just locking it out. Hoodie sets himself up with the off angle. He knows Astro is going to have to try and clear so much with that AWP. Without the rifle, the opportunity for the multi-kill is so slim. Hoodie might have even heard that scope. I don't think he has. He hasn't called the rotation as Astro slowly sneaks his way up A-long. Clearing in towards the site, but does he check this tight corner? Astro, the gun barrel is there. This is an execution. The knife comes out. The disrespect from Hoodie. Have who have their double digits. And on the map, pick of Fierce. The UK roster are wobbling. Havu looking a class above their UK opponents so far in this matchup. And what more can Fierce Esports try and do here? They will be forcing, of course, into round 14. The Creed comes out for Eccles, but it's pistols for all of his teammates around that 2K mark. Astro, Frey, Alex, all on the Deagles. Trying to find something for Fierce Esports. But again, there's so much utility for Havu to lock out this fast play. Only a couple of players towards the B-bomb site on this occasion. So perhaps an opportunity for this rush to pay dividends. So much presence towards the B-bomb site over on the Havu side of things. They have Twixie. They have Slowy as this fast play comes in. The call should be made for the rotation. Saw can come fast through the connector. He spots out Astro. He finds the opening. It's a two-for-one trade. Twixie finds a second on the site. And they're just stalling for that short player to get there. The bomb goes down. It's four on three. They have short locked out. They know all three players are in towards Monster as the boost over the smoke. Might actually find a frag here. Twixie doesn't seem to have any idea. Zori walks right into it. Three on three. Is this an opportunity for Fierce Esports? The utility is actually buying a little bit of time for the T side. But Saw locks it down. 3v2 now. And there is nowhere for them to move as Twixie takes down Eccles. It's all on to Alex in jail. He can't get anything done with the Deagle. Havu. Dispatch of the force by once more. 11 to 3 the scoreline. Fierce absolutely on the ropes here on their own map pick. 11 to 3 on your map pick against the side who've come down from MDL and are really showing that MDL class here in this matchup. The Orps out for Zori. The rifles are across the board. It will be the AKs to try and counter for Fierce, but there is not a lot to work with. 5 AK 47s. No AWP for Astro. Utility very limited onto Alex. As again, they're setting up for this fast B play. They clearly think they found something to work with, but the flash is not quite good enough. Burning alive. Twixie gets a double kill through the Molotov, and it's still doing more work. Eccles is down to half HP as he tries to sneak out onto the site. Astro, Eccles, and Frey left in a three versus four. Twixie's done so much work. The utility missed Molotov by the T side. And Slowy is still alive towards the barrels. This is all the timing. Hoodie gets one. Saw's traded out. And they know Slowy's there. But they can't dispatch of him as Eccles. Unable to do any more work. And again, 12 to three at the half. I cannot. I cannot accentuate how important that is. Havu have gone absolutely huge. This is Fierce's map pick. This is Fierce's map pick, and Havu have come to it looking to destroy, set to kill the Finnish roster. 12 to 3 at the half, needing just four more rounds to dispatch of the Fierce map pick and head to their pick of D2, where we've seen Fierce dismantled by the likes of SJ. This pistol is must win for the UK roster. There is no other way to put it. They have to win this one. There's a flash 
Two flashes and a smoke for Saw. No defuse kit on the fear side of things. They're going to go for the early peak. Stanley and Alex. There's three, actually three players going to make their way down the connector early on. Have you to head out into the playground? Taking control of Long. Perfectly dodging the early stacks of Fierce Esports who do take control of Phoenix. They're getting this information. But all the while, have have read this? They're just heading up Long. They are clearing so much map that Fierce have no presence. There's actually a free plant on the A bomb site at the moment. Not that have you know it. As they start to make their way down, Saw takes a bit of damage down to 38 HP. He's been spotted out now. This move needs to speed up. The rotation's starting to come in. Eccles makes his way out towards the bins. He's got a nice headshot angle as well. Slowy should be an easy enough entry pick here. But can he call the rotations in quickly enough? Eccles finds himself the first. Smoked off the angle now. He has to stick or twist as Havu should get this bomb down in a 4v5 retake for Fierce Esports. They have the fast flank. You can see Saw moving to cover it, but on just 38 HP, he's going to struggle. Still manages to find the frag, and how crucial could that be? Recovers the USPS as Twixie gets proactive on his angle. Holding tight to the sight. Zori unable to get it done. Eccles gets one. Tweaks. He trades for the first. But now he's isolated. The trades are still coming through. Two on two. With Saw on just 5 HP. Can Astro and Alex find this pistol round? It's absolutely crucial. They're trying to push out. But without a defuse kit. Have we just need to buy time. Hoodie goes down. It's all on Saw. 5 HP to try and lock this one out. There's no defuse kit available. Alex has to try and stick this. The tap comes in. Saw peeks wide. He gets the information. There's nobody on the bomb. He peeks back onto it. Are they sticking the defuse? I believe they are. The body blocking's coming in. Saw can't get it done. Astro secures the round. Fierce will get a fourth. The defuse has been stuck. They will get themselves a fourth round on the board. 12 to 4 the scoreline. By the skin of their teeth, Fierce managed to pull off that retake. Literally, if Hoodie stays alive a few seconds more there, that round is all over. Saw on low HP, just in a really awkward position, trying to deny the bomb plant to fuse, but you could see Fierce body blocking the angle as the force buy actually comes in from Havu. The instant response, of course, they got that bomb down, so their buy is not much worse than we see from Fierce. They do manage to get two, three rifles out, including the FAMAS, as Havu looked to go fast towards this B-bomb site early on. Plenty of utility to try and stop it from the CT side, and good damage done early on. They don't expect the short player there. It's a one-for-one -one trade. The MAC-10 is doing a lot of work early on, but the rest of the players are a little bit slow to the site, and still with that short presence to work with, Fierce are in a perfect position here. Stanley is still alive towards those sandbags, but he's been red, and there we go. Zori finds him. Now a four on three, and these M4s have to go huge in the retake. Havu with the afterplant position to work with. The spam through will find one for Eccles, and that really makes this retake viable. How crucial could that opening pick be? No more utility available for Havu. Two MAC-10s and a Galil to try and hold this one down. One of those MAC-10s is gone already as Twixie falls to Astro. They're trying to bait for this last MAC-10, who's left three versus one. He gets the first. He's playing for time, but he can't get the frag. Zori only gets one. The force by fails. Fierce grab themselves a fifth and manage to save themselves a couple of rifles as well as Astro and Alex. Recover the M4s. 5 to 12. That force by almost working out for Havu, but not quite. They survive another test. They survive a little bit longer. Havu look like they're going to buy again, though. They got the bomb plant in both of those opening rounds. They have the cash to back this play up. So, AK's come out for Twixie. So, he's going to have to drop down onto the Galil. Mac 10 for Slowey. M4s across the board on the fierce side of things. But it has meant they've sacrificed utility on Stanley and Eccles. So, Perhaps the extra utility available on some of those Havu players could prove crucial. Early boost in towards short from Fierce to get that information. As you see, Astro and Alex, they get aggressive early on. Just falling back from that opening pick. Not wanting to contest the angle too strongly. Without that AWP on Astro, they really can't afford to hang about for too long. As you see, Hoodie very methodically clearing all of those angles. Making absolutely certain there's no aggression from Fierce. Everybody just takes a pause for a moment. Try not to be that player to give away the opening pick. This is such a crucial swing round. The force buy has come in from Havu. They've grabbed three AK-47s. If they win this round, the economy still isn't built for Fierce Esports. They'll be on absolutely minimal loss bonus. They'll be getting no real cash. There won't be any chance to buy to stop a 14th. Twixie just slowly sneaking his way out here. He's going to eat a little bit of nade damage. And Stanley goes proactive. He finds one. The trade is there from Twixie, who is tagged down. As Frey gives away his position with the smokes, the flashbang allows him to escape, though. And now a four on four. Havu look fairly committed to this B-bomb site. And there's plenty of presence here for Fierce. Astro looking to use utility just to stall Havu a little while longer. Twixie and Saw are isolated in towards Monster. You can see Hoodie trying to cut out exit frags here. But he's in a really awkward position. There's two players. Twixie. 
doesn't expect the proactive this echo gets the first looking for more of the spray not going to quite connect with the headshot but now they know where the bomb is they spotted it on the back of saw and he is very isolated alone towards this site taking so much damage as Frey takes him down slowly can only find a dink in response on that mac 10 and now the reinforcements have been called in the backstab from hoodie is essential but alex Look at this 2,000 IQ read. Slowey takes so much damage. Hoodie's position is red, and it's all down to Slowey. He recovers the AK-47 and tries to hightail it out of there, but Fierce are not content with that. They are going to hunt him down after time. They let him live, and then they let him burn. Eccles with the headshot takes him down. And Slowey doesn't get any cash. $200. The constant force buys not working out for Havu. They're yet to grab around on the T side, and... If you're fierce, you perhaps start to feel a little bit of confidence here. You start to feel like you're winning this second half. You are so far owning these rifle buys. It will be the Deagle half buy coming out from Havu. Three Deagles, P250 for Saw. Nothing, of course, for Slowey on just $200 as Twixie takes a lot of early nade damage. And so do Hoodie and Zori trying to get aggressive. Slowey gets caught out. And this is excellent use of the utility by Fierce. It has allowed Twixie to get nice and aggressive out of long. But you can see the read coming through. The rotation is already being called for Fierce. Pulling Eccles up in towards that A bomb site. Such an intelligent read. The Deagle might be able to get one here. Eccles out in the open. Will be an opening pick for Twixie. Looking for more. Twixie gets two. And it's all down to Astro to lock down this A bomb site. But Twixie's on the flank. Another huge triple kill for the Havu man. As Frey and Stanley are left clutching at straws to try and recover this situation. Four on two. How has it come to this? The four spies don't work, but the nades will catch the planter. Fierce get a little bit of a consolation prize onto the bomb plant, but it's still a three on two. There's still two M4s in the hands of Twixie and Slowey. Slowey without the armor to back it up. Twixie really has to go huge here. He's got three in this round already as Frey and Stanley trying to make their way in towards this site. So many angles to clear. The smoke comes out. Stanley taps the bomb. That baits out the first, the second, the third. What a retake from Fierce. Frey and Stanley combine in unison. Three frags in quick succession as they find the defuse as well. How have they done that, Fierce? Twixie finds himself a triple kill. Gets it into a four on two. The bomb planter is taken down by utility, but Havu can't quite hold on to it. The pause comes in as Havu yet to pick up a round on the T side of things. 12 to 7. They've got to start feeling a little bit worried here. Perhaps starting to see why Fierce opt for this map pick. They're clearly looking good on the CT side of things at the moment. Looking like they really know how to play this. Chat says, why didn't Twix bait Zori? Well, these are the questions you will never know the answer to. <laughs> Nobody knows, boys. 12 to 7, the scoreline. Havu will be able to get the full buyout. Zori on his favored orb. Currently top fragging for Havu. So perhaps that could be the catalyst that they need to get over this last little hurdle and take the map pick of Fierce away from them. 12 to 7, the scoreline. Fierce within 5 as Astro does grab the AWP. First time on the CT side, we've seen that. Rifles for his teammates. Looks like he's going to get aggressive early on in towards party. Looking for that proactive pick. He knows, of course, with the smokes dropped down, there's not a lot of vision. For the Havu side of things. As Eccles just looks for a timing on the nade. Havu have waited that one out. You can see they're not going to push through. Until they're happy the position is clear. Now they start to take control. Phoenix is queued up. It is just a straight B take coming in here from Havu. Three players up towards short. The pot flash comes out. The AWP is in towards monster. As Eccles takes early damage. But no early frags. Stanley and Frey combined for three. The bomb is out in the open. And it's a 5v1 for Zori. This is more like it from Fierce. The CT holds finally coming through. Azori has left one versus four. He manages to find an opening pick, but there's nothing more for him to do here. And Havu, they're just not firing on the T side. Of course, credit where credit's due for Fierce. Frey and Stanley showing up in a huge way. Two kills apiece in this round to get themselves within four. And again, the economy isn't there for Havu. Their money is all but bust. It'd be a very, very long road home for them at this point, and you've got to wonder if they can pull it off. How demoralizing has this got to be? You've just lost five rounds on the trot. You were 12 3 up. Now, Fierce have recovered to within four. They're saving themselves three AK 47s as well. And how crucial could that be? Three AKs picked up. 
utility saved as well for Fierce. Alex and Astro still have almost a full bank of nades to try and work their way back into this. Zori will just be saving that AWP, trying to give his team a little bit more potency into round number six of the second half. Oh, so I'm going to grab myself a drink of water, and this is more like it from the UK side. This is what we wanted to see them bring to the party, and they are bringing it big time. Three AK saved will allow them to start to build that bank, give themselves the kind of economic security we saw Havu having towards the end of that first half. It looks like the force has actually been called down to about that 2k mark across the board. Zori, of course, saves the AWP. Havu managed to pick up another AK on Hoodie, but besides that, a tech, a CZ, and a MAC-10 is not a good buy at all for Havu, who are again heading towards the B bomb site early on. This has been an area they've struggled. The flash is good, but the damage is so significant. Stanley actually finds one through the smoke as he burns alive, but he gets one with the molly all the same to make it a 4v3. The AK and the AWP are still up, and how crucial could that be as slowly recovers the M4? The damage isn't coming through, though. Eccles finds a frag. They're spotting these players out, and again, Zori is 1v5 on that AWP. How are they doing this? Fierce, they are just biting back brutally. A flawless CT half from them so far. As now they draw within three. Havu need to fall away from that fast B play. It is not working out for them at all. Every time they head towards B, they are failing miserably. The spam through does so much damage there from Eccles. And he just mops up the exit frags. 12 to 9, the scoreline fierce within 3. Havu do get the buyout, but it's only AKs. No AWP for Zori. And the early nade damage onto Twixie is significant. Going for a counter boost here, Havu, to try and get some information in towards that B-bomb site. The spam through, not connecting onto much of anything. They're trying to distract from that boost. The nade catches Saw and Slowy. Look at the early damage. The chips that are coming out from the Havu players are so significant. Saw, Slowy, and Twixie are all now a one-shot headshot with an M4. And how crucial can that be? We've seen time and time again how important it is for those AKs to win the duels over on the CT side. On the T side, excuse me. But now Havu, left with a significant health disadvantage. Just three rounds ahead, yet to win a round on the T side. What can they find here as Slowy tries to take that Krieg out towards the bathrooms? These three saved AKs are going to do so much work for Fierce. You can see Havu are now trying to queue up towards the A bomb site, but this is so predictable. They failed repeatedly at taking B, and surely Fierce now know that if it's not a fast B play, they're going to be heading towards A. Four players currently there for Havu. Astro aggressive on the AWP needs to be proactive in this pick if he wants to try and stay alive, because Havu are starting to queue up into him. Has the support of Alex, and the rotation has been called for Eccles as the utility will be thrown. Can Havu find themselves around here on the T side? Astro trying to be proactive out in the open. Isolated will be found by Hoodie. Finally, Havu have a man advantage early on, but Eccles instantly moves to correct it. Will be traded out onto Alex as Eccles' last man on the site is taken down by Slowey. That's yielded a bomb plant, and now four versus two. Surely Frey and Stanley can't pull off the antics again. And Zori will get this bomb down and saw straight through the wall. We'll find Frey. Stanley can't clean it up. Slowey cleans house. Havu finally have something over on the T side. Finally, they find themselves a breakthrough. The pause is called almost instantly as Fierce actually disconnect a player from the server. And Havu are within three. The momentum shift has been towards Fierce, but now Havu finally have an opportunity to close this one out. Three rounds away. Three more rounds for the finish side to steal the map pick of Fierce. And then, of course, they're heading to Dust 2. And we saw SJ demolish Fierce on that in previous occasions. We've seen SJ... I, I'm going to go with dismantling Fierce on Dust 2. So, Havu clearly feeling confident taking that as their second pick. And could that be the instrumental difference? As we do see Astro rejoining the server. With Havu just three rounds away. Three more rounds for the finish side to take map one. The pause still in place. As Fierce perhaps just talk through the strategy after the back of this tech. Try and work out how they're going to win these rounds. How are they going to come back into this? They've had a good string of rounds to start things off. They do have cash built up in the bank. They can get that full rebuy on the cards. They can start to try and perhaps rebuild this half. But the problem for them is Havu are three away. 
They're in this really awkward position where just three rounds from winning this. Three more rounds is all that Fierce need. Uh, that Havu need. Excuse me. The buy has come in. Zori's got the AWP. There's AKs and a Krieg as well. So much to work with. As Astro picks up the AWP, there's M4s across the board for Fierce. This is the fair flight. Astro looks to get aggressive early on in towards party. Is Havu actually going to take control of Connector early on? Early control towards Phoenix. Early control of that B bomb site. The nade's not doing quite as much work on this occasion. Early spams, not really trading much of anything. The nade stacks from Havu are finding good damage, though, as Stanley goes down to 31. And Havu just reacts to those nades by making their way back up in towards this A bomb site. Astro, of course, still there on the AWP, has the support of Alex, but they struggle to hold it down on the previous take. And I think Havu, off the back of that, are just looking to lean towards A a little bit more. Astro up on top of the half wall isn't going to be tested from the for the time being. Astro misses the opening pick, and how crucial could that be? Has to fall back off the angle. Can they find this? Can Havu get themselves within two? Or is there still a chance for Fierce Esports? The boost up on the AWP is not going to spot out much of anything. Interestingly, Fierce not looking to get aggressive and too much. Astro and Alex are looking to push in towards the bathrooms, but no real presence towards B. Twixie's been left to try and hold this site down by himself as slow. He does find the opening pick, and Alex out in the open has to trade it. Manages to get the one. The Molotov will actually trade his death, so a three on three as the bomb looks to go down. The fast rotation's coming in, and you can see Stanley going for the backstab, but on just 31 HP, can he find anything as Twixie takes down Thray through the smoke? This bomb has to go down, and it has to go down now. Could they find the bomb plant? They will do! How have Fierce won this? Stanley on the backstab denies the bomb plant, gets Fierce into the double digits. 13 to 10. Fierce are not going to go down quietly. Fierce are not going to go down without a fight. 13 to 10. Somehow, someway, Stanley anchors the round for Fierce Esports. The pause comes in. As Havu have got to be wondering what more they need to do. They're finding the trade frags, but that's just a moment of individual brilliance from Stanley. Single-handedly anchoring down that round for his team. That could have gone so, so badly wrong. But instead, the flank is time to perfection. He denies the bomb plant, secures the round for his team. Astro 1, Norton 1. Yeah, that's what happens when you disconnect from the server. The full buy is still in for Havu. Somehow their economy is still afloat. They've got the AWP on Zori. They've got the Kriegs and the AKs to back it up. But they need to start finding rounds now. Fierce again within three. As Havu really struggling to take it to them over on the T side of things. And the boost into Phoenix is going to get a lot of early information for Fierce. Alex and Astro trusted with this A-bomb site hold once again. As the pot flash through the smoke will keep Alex off it a little while longer. If Havu find these two early picks, then it's going to be a very difficult recovery over on the CT side of things. Alex playing around the edge of the smoke. They have no idea that the flank is already in for Astro and Alex. No warp this time for Astro, but that is absolutely ideal. As Zori starts to sneak his way up long, does he have any idea the bathrooms haven't been cleared? He doesn't. He's looking completely the wrong way. He walks into it. He spots out two players but can do nothing. And as Eccles looks to hold down this bomb site, he is traded one for one. Astro recovers the orc. Can't quite hit the shot. It's 4v4 as the bomb goes down very early on. No more wasting time for Havu as slow. He just about controls the spray, but on just two HP, he knows he has to stay alive. Times it to perfection to pick off Stanley. Now it is down to Astro and Frey. To recover this situation. Sori's in a very advanced position here. And he doesn't expect the boost at all. Somehow corrects for the kill. And does Frey even go for this now? He's all alone. He's on the B-bomb site. He's just looking to save himself that M4A4. Havu will have 14. Just two more rounds for the T-side. Just two more rounds are all Havu need to finish this one off. And as the round ends, Frey will be allowed to stay alive. The hunt not going to connect through Slowey on just 2 HP going for the hunt. 
and I need to tab out quickly because I need to time out the annoying people who score predict. The problem for Fierce here is their money is absolutely busted. They're going to have to force, they have to try and prevent this one going to map point, but somehow Havu have just kept their economy a little bit more secure as the Deagles and CCs come out for Fierce. Frey saving the M4 is the only rifle they can afford as Astro stuck on the SMG. Nice early nade, will connect for some good damage onto Saw to open things up, and that's what you need when you've got these pistols, when you've got these SMGs, you need that early tick damage to try and open something up for you. Have you understandably playing fairly cautiously? They are looking to clear into connector, and there's a little bit of a stack between Eccles and Alex on the CZ and the Deagle, respectively. Those pistols looking to do some work, and that Molotov won't clear them out, but it will confirm their suspicions that there's players here. That Molotov will do it. They hear the ticks of damage. They look to cut it out very early on, but not quite finding it. The retreat will be called. Astro, Eccles, and Alex absolutely hightailing it back towards that A bomb site as Saw. A little bit too late on the pick. Won't be able to cut them off. Fierce just about keeping five alive here. Just about as they set themselves up with a new angle. Astro and again Alex in towards the bathrooms. They have been the solo holders of this A-bomb site. Nobody else has been trusted with it. Frey does come up on the support. Has that M4 of course. But th straight through the smoke. Slowy, how have you done that? You've knocked the only rifle out of the hands of Fierce Esports. And you can see Stanley desperate to get aggressive in response. Eccles will just about be able to recover that M4. So there's a little bit of opportunity perhaps. But as Havu start to execute towards B. Oh, the timing is so good. Stanley grabs one. Grabs himself the Krieg. Looks to fall back as Hoodie takes down the site. But the trades are coming through. Alex finds one in response. And it's 3v3. Stanley has a Krieg towards short. And Stanley looks to make it count. Eccles is spotted out through the edge of that smoke. Three versus three. Zori not quite connecting. Zori's been spotted out as well. Eccles pushing up is dispatched. In a one-for-one -one trade by Twixy. Two on two now. Alex and Stanley, they both have recovered rifles to work with. Short and CT. Can they make this retake happen? Stanley spotted out. Taken down by Zori. It's all on to Alex. The ex-Fanatic Academy player trying to make something special happen here. But there's so many angles to clear. And so little time. He's heard dropping down into water. Twixy knows where he is. The trade is through. 15 to 10. Havu finally find their feet on the T side. And they are just one round away from stealing the map pick of Fierce. And I call it stealing. Because for a moment, it looked like the compact was on from the UK side. 15 to 10. Havu needing just one more round to take a 1-0 lead into their pick of D2. And how important could that be? How critical is that? Fifteen to ten. Poor spy comes in for fierce. The MP9 is out again. This time it's on Stanley. There's pistols for everybody else, but there's just no firepower behind this from Fierce Esports. They have run the bank dry. There are no more loans to be had. They've got three CZs, a Deagle on Alex, that one SMG. It would take an absolute miracle against the AKs, Kriegs, and AWP of Havu here. And they know it. You can see they know it. They're playing very cautiously in the early round. They know the economy is absolutely shot from Fierce Esports. They're just going to hold. Try and wait out some aggressions from these pistols. The CZs of Fierce will sit back. Try and play passively. Try and walk into the crosshairs. CT side. They are at such a disadvantage here. It would be a miracle if somebody can come up huge. Somebody needs to clutch this round for Fierce Esports. Can it be Astro? He's been such an anchor on that AWP towards the A-bomb site. Twixie a little bit isolated. Falls back off of it. They'll hear this reload. Stanley is very aggressive here. And I don't think they'll expect him in this tight position. The smoke will hide his position a little while longer. The counter CT smoke goes very deep. Actually just falls back into a much more passive position than you'd expect. Where do Havu look to go here? There's only two players towards the B-bomb site, but it's Frey and Stanley, and they have a really nice set hold of this monster area, as it looks like Havu are indeed lining up the utility towards B. Can Frey and Stanley go huge? Can they lock this one down for their team? The rotation is being called, so there could be quite a lot of CT presence as this B-hit comes through. The rotation will be called off the back of this utility, and now they have to go. Stanley and Frey have to go huge. They find nothing early on as Twixie and Slowy find a frag apiece, storming into the bomb site. And this, surely, this is it for Fierce. Two Deagles and a C two CZs and a Deagle. All they have to work with as Havu get the bomb down in a 5 versus 3 retake. And the utility is just locking Fierce out of this site. 
Hot flashes for the CZs. They're spotted out. Twixy finds one. Slowy finds the second. It is a demolition job of map one. 16 to 10. Have you take it? And we will be back very, very shortly.